What's up guys, Miles here from 95 mac and if you're a fan of good ideas, consider subscribing to the channel for future content like this. Today we're gonna to be going over the top features of the brand new iOS 16 developer beta that just dropped today. There's a whole lot of new awesome features for messages and the lock screen that we've gotta cover. So let's dive in. The new lock screen was the first and probably biggest iOS 16 feature announced at WWDC. You can now essentially add widgets to the lock screen and customize placement and style in accordance with what you like and what Apple has to offer at this point. Lock screen widgets take inspiration from Apple Watch complications. So you can put things like your activity rings, alarms, battery levels, all on the lock screen now. There's also a new widget called Live Activities, which allow you to view things that are happening in real time, like a live sports game, workouts, rideshare app or food delivery right on the lock screen. You can also see now that notifications appear at the bottom of the screen so you've got plenty of room for your personalized items on the top of the lock screen. And I gotta say having your messages appear at the very bottom of the screen is kind of jarring. Uh, I'd say coming from iOS 15 and all the previous versions where normally it appears directly in the middle. This is something I'll probably get, have to get used to and I also feel like there's a decent amount of room where they could push these messages up just a little bit more because having them appear at the very bottom right above the flashlight and camera icons it seems a little weird so far but another cool feature that I don't even think Apple mentioned in their keynote today was that face ID now works in landscape mode on supported iPhones and I'm assuming that a supported iPhone just means an iPhone with face ID but I'm not exactly sure but either way if you put your iPhone into landscape mode and put it in front of your face it will surely unlock just as it would if you had it uh, in portrait mode and that's not a major feature but it's definitely convenient especially if you're using your iPhone in the bed or something like that and don't want to have to turn it. It's a nice little feature. iOS 16 comes with new upgrades to the focus feature, including the ability to connect your lock screen setup with a certain focus mode. So if you have a workout focus, for example, you can switch to a more sporty workout theme setup with all the fitness and activity widgets available for you on the home screen. You can also now use focus to filter out certain content within the calendar app, the mail app, messages app, and Safari. And I think this is a really cool feature that hopefully can expand to third-party applications. Imagine being able to filter out certain music in your Spotify playlist based on whatever you're doing, whether it be a workout or a drive somewhere. That'd be really cool. You can also now have focus turn on automatically at a set time or location while using a specific application. So we're just seeing the layers to focus building more and more. It's a really comprehensive feature. You've now got a spotlight search button right on the home screen, right above the dock. So you no longer have to swipe down to access spotlight if you don't want to. And personally, I don't think this was a necessary change just because it's so easy to do to swipe down to access spotlight like this. But hey, if they just wanna make it convenient as absolutely possible for you, I'll take it, I guess. You've also got expanded search results in Spotlight based on whatever keywords you use. So for example, if I search the word cowboy, it's gonna show me some pictures of cowboys on Google. Probably the biggest update I'm excited for the most with iOS 16 is the new iMessage features. You can firstly now edit messages up to 15 minutes after sending them. All you have to do is go to the message, long press it, hit the edit button and you can make whatever changes you like. You can also undo sends up to 15 minutes after you send a message, which is something I've been waiting for ever since I got into the Apple ecosystem and started using iMessage. Undo send is a, uh, it's a really great feature. It can come in handy for sure. And when you hit the unsend button, you get a pretty cool animation when doing it. It's, it's nice. There's also now a mark as unread feature, which is pretty useful as well. You can mark a contact or an entire group chat as unread and the unread blue bubble will reappear next to said contact or group chat. You've now also got share play via iMessage, which allow you to listen or watch to content in real time with someone you're communicating with over iMessage. And from what I can tell, it'll pretty much work with every app that supports share play in general right now. So Spotify, Apple Music, Disney Plus, apps like that. And I gotta say, it works pretty smoothly. I tested it out with Spotify and I think it works really well. One feature that I've wanted from FaceTime for ages is being able to hand off FaceTime calls between Apple devices like an iPhone and a Mac. So now you can simply go on another device during a FaceTime call and transfer the call to said device. And if you're using wireless earphones like AirPods, then it should transfer that to the new device as well. And holy crap, this is by far the biggest feature I've wanted on FaceTime time since I started using it, the ability to hand off between different devices because I used to use Google Hangouts for video chatting and that was something I could easily do. I'm super happy we've got this feature now. 
on iOS. Live text is also getting some improvements with iOS 16 and the biggest improvement is video support. So now you can go into a video in your camera roll, pause on a frame and copy or translate text. It's definitely not perfect and the font and clarity of the text has to at least be decent and legible without really looking at it too hard. But overall it works very well and it's another one of those things that makes live text arguably one of the most underrated iOS features in my opinion. I can't think of any other software for a mobile device Device that allows you to do that at this point, but you guys can let me know if I'm wrong. There's also a really dope new feature called Visual Lookup that allows you to long press on a subject within a photo and then share that subject individually with someone on a messaging app like iMessage or any other app that will accept a photo. All you have to do is long press and hold on the subject for a few seconds and then wait for a white line to highlight around the subject. Then you should see an option to either copy or share the subject. And you can't always share every subject within a photo. It usually has to be the largest or most most prominent photo typically in the center of the frame and that's what will make it the most easily recognizable. I've tried a few images where there's multiple people in the frame and usually it's hard for it to figure out uh, which one is the right subject per se. And I gotta say even though it's not pixel perfect with the cropping of the subject it's pretty darn good enough given the fact that it can do it in basically one second. There's no waiting around for it to figure out what the right subject is and that's that's pretty cool. So if you've got a photo of a car or someone right in the center of a frame it's gonna to work really well for situations like that. A feature that I don't believe is live at all yet, but was announced for Apple Pay within iOS is Pay Later. And this is similar to PayPal's Pay in 4 program that allows users to split up purchases into like four payments over six weeks. And there's no credit information required or interest involved in any way. And assuming this feature becomes available to the public before iOS fully releases, we'll have some content covering that feature down the line. But on the surface, I'm sure this is gonna be something that a lot of people are gonna get use out of. But those are more or less the top features that we're getting with iOS 16 this year. The developer beta is out today, like I said, so if you wanna try it for yourself, there'll be a link in the description down below for that. And we're gonna have a full video covering every single new feature within iOS and iPadOS 16 like we always have. So if you're excited for that, be sure to subscribe to the channel for all of that content. And if you like automotive stuff, I just started a car channel that you should definitely check out if you like me. If you don't, then that's okay, but either way, I will talk to you guys in the next one.